Hey, my name is Felipe and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Amazon Recognition as an object detector. Amazon Recognition is a very interesting tool and a very powerful tool which I have used many times in my projects as a computer vision engineer. Now let me show you super quickly all the different categories, all the different objects you can detect using AWS Recognition. And you can see that this is a very, very long and a very comprehensive list of objects, right? For example, you can detect dinosaurs, you can also detect diamonds, you can detect driving licenses, e-scooters, and so on. If I scroll down, you can see that these are many, many, many categories. And in total, we have something like 290 different objects. So this is definitely a lot. And this is a very interesting tool because there are many cases in many situations in many projects in which you need to detect a very specific type of object and in some cases it may not make a lot of sense to train an entire object detector only to detect a very specific object. In some cases it may be more convenient and it may be easier and it may be quicker, much quicker to just use something like Amazon recognition out of the box and you can just detect all of these different objects in the list, right? For example, if we were working in a project and we need to detect wheels, we can either train an object detector from scratch to detect wheels or we can just use Amazon recognition out of the box, right? So this is a very interesting tool and I have used it many times in my projects and this is exactly what we will be doing today. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Amazon Recognition to detect zebras. This is a random category, a random object I have chosen from this list. So this is exactly the object we will be using in order to show you how to use Amazon Recognition. Now, let me show you super quickly the video we are going to use as an example so we can uh, use this tool. And you can see that this is a video in which we have many, many, many zebras. We are going to use this video in order to uh, detect all the zebras and in order to show you how to use Amazon recognition. Now, the, what we're going to do now is going to PyCharm and I'm going to show you the entire process of how to create a project, how to create all the files we need, how to install the requirements. I'm going to show you absolutely every single step of this process. We are going to start this project and we're going to build this project from scratch, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I have already opened PyCharm. I'm going to file new project and I'm going to just create a project and I'm going to create this project exactly here which is this folder I have over here and I'm going to create it here where it says tutorial AWS record. This is where you are going to choose the exact directory where you want to create your project. Then I'm going to create a new environment and this is where my environment is going to be located and I'm going to create this environment using Python 3.8. Now I'm going to click on create. Uh, I'm going to choose this window because I'm going to open um, this project over here. And you can see that this is a completely and fully and absolutely empty project. The only thing we have is the virtual environment, which is called EMB, and that is it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to install the requirements, is to install the Python libraries we are going to use today. So I'm going to settings, then I'm going to a project and Python interpreter, and I'm going to click on this button, this plus button over here, and then I'm just going to choose, I'm going to type OpenCV Python. This is one of the libraries we are going to use. I'm going to click on install package. And then we are also going to use Bodo3. And that's pretty much all. These are the two libraries we need in this project. And then I'm just going back to PyCharm. And now I'm going to create the first file we are going to use in this project. And I'm going to click here, new Python file. And then I'm going to call this file main.py. So the, the first thing I'm going to do for now is to just write the entire pipeline, the entire process we will be doing today. The first step will be to create a native AWS recognition client. AWS Reco client, right? This is going to be the first step in this process. Then we are going to set the class, set the target class we are going to be detecting, right? I already mentioned we were going to detect zebras in this tutorial. So this is exactly where we are going to specify exactly what's the object, what's the category we are going to be detecting. Then we are going to load the video, right? The video we are going to detect today. Then we are going to read frames from the video. 
the next step is to convert the frame to JPG. This is a very important step. Then we are going to convert this. Uh, we're going to get a buffer from this conversion and we're going to convert this buffer to uh, uh, two bytes, right? This is going to be the next step in this process. Then the only thing we need to do is to use Amazon recognition in order to detect objects. And then we are going to write all the detections to our, fi to our file system, right? We are going to write everything to our disk, to our local computer. And this is exactly the process in which we are going to be working today. Now, let me show you something else. I'm going to create another file which is called credentials because in the first step in this process, we are going to create this AWS record client. And in order to do so, we are going to need a couple of keys. We are going to need an access key, which I'm just going to set in none for now. And we're also going to need a secret key which I'm also going to set in none for now, right? We are going to need these two keys in order to continue with this project because we need to uh, use these two keys in order to create a client, an AWS recognition client. Now, let's go back to my browser and let me show you exactly how to create these two keys. So let's go back to my AWS management console and the, I'm going to show you super quickly how to create these two keys we need in this project. But first, obviously, you need an AWS account in order to continue, right? This is very, very important. And also, you need to log in into your account. Once you have an account, once you have created an account and you are logged into your account, you are going to see something like this. This is your AWS management console. And these are all the services which you have available in AWS, right? These are a lot. But in today's tutorial, we are only going to use one service, only one service, which is is IAM. So we need to type IAM over here and we need to select this option. Then this is your IAM management console and you need to select users. We are going to create a new user. Then you need to select add users and we are going to choose a name for this user. I'm going to say something like AWS Reco tutorial, right? This is the name of my user. This is the user I'm going to create. Then you need to select attach policies directly and we are going to search for recognition, right? And I'm going to select Amazon recognition full access. I click here, then next, and that's pretty much all. So I'm just going to create user. So the user is now created and then I'm going to select the user over here, AWS record tutorial, and I'm going to security credentials because now it's where we are going to create the two keys we need in our project. So we scroll down until we until this section over here, access keys and create access keys. Then you, you can see that we have all these different options. And if I'm not mistaken, it's pretty much the same how you are going to create this access key. Pretty much absolutely all these options are going to create exactly the same keys and you can just use, this, uh, use it from your project if I'm not mistaken. But we are going to use this one over here which is local code because this is the description which fits better to our project, right? You plan to use this access key to enable application code in a local development environment to access your AWS account. If I'm not mistaken, it's pretty much the same if we use any other option, but let's just uh, use the option which fits better with our use case. And now you can see we have a warning over here which is alternative recommended. Use an integrated development environment IDE which supports the AWS toolkit, toolkit enabling authentication through AAM Identity Center. And this is very important because this is a warning we get from AWS because it means there is a better way or there is a more secure way to create these keys and to access this service. But in this tutorial, we are not going to mind this warning because it will involve to create a solution which it's only useful for a very specific IDE, right? In my case, I'm using PyCharm. And if I follow these instructions, I, I will be using a, a solution which is only 
useful for PyCharm, right? And I want to make this tutorial as generic as possible and I want you to use it as well. So in case you are using a different IDE, let's just uh, create these access keys in a different way, right? The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh, checkbox over here. I understand the above recommendation and I want to proceed to create an access key and I'm going to click next, right? I'm going to show you a very, very generic way to use it, which is going to work for whatever your IDE uh, is right if you use PyCharm or if you use Visual Studio and so on. So I'm not going to type anything here, so just create access key. And these are our access keys. Something that's very, very important is that access keys are very personal and you should never disclose them. Uh, a, with anyone in any situation, right? So you should never do something like I'm doing right now, right? Just making a video with my access key is completely available for anyone watching this tutorial. Never do something like this, right? In my case, it's not really that important because I'm just going to delete these keys once this tutorial is over, but please be super, super mindful and super careful with who has access with your access keys, with your private access keys, because this is very, very uh, sensitive information. So the only thing I'm going to do for now is to copy these two fields. I'm going to start with this one, which is access key. I'm going to copy this field and I'm going to get back to PyCharm. I'm going to my file to credentials.pi. And the only thing I'm going to do is to paste the access key over here, right? Then let's get back to this uh, page and I'm just going to copy the secret access key and I'm going to get back to Python and I'm just going to paste the secret key. And that's really much all. So these are the two keys you need in this project. And now we can continue with the main.pi uh, file and we can just start coding our entire pipeline. So let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is to import Bottle 3 and let's import OpenCV as well so we can just focus on everything else, right? So I have in I have imported the two libraries we have installed in this project and now let's get started by creating this AWS record client. And this is how we're going to do. I'm going to call this client uh, reco client and this is something like bottle 3 dot client and then I need to input recognition and then this is where we're going to input the uh, access keys, right? So we're going to have two keys. One of them is AWS access key ID and then the other one will be something like AWS secret access key, right? And now the only thing I need to do is to import credentials. I need to import these two uh, variables, right? So the first one will be something like credentials dot access key. And then the other one will be credentials dot secret key. And that's pretty much all. So now let's continue and we're going to set the target class. So I'm going to create a variable which is target class and this is where I'm going to define the class we are going to be detecting today. As I already told you, we are going to be detecting zebras. So now let's continue. Now it's time to load the video. And what I'm going to do is to go to my directory where I have the video. And I'm going to copy and paste this uh, video to my directory where I have created this Python project. So now the video is located in this Python project and it's called zebras.mp4. So let's go back to PyCharm. So now let's call, let's load this video exactly by like this. I'm going to call CV2 video capture and then this will be zebras.mp4 and this will be cap. Okay, now let's read frames from the video. So I'm going to define a variable which is red. I'm going to initialize it as true and then while red, I'm going to read frames from the video like this red frame equal to cap dot read right so we are reading frames from the video and now let's convert this frame to jpg and this is how we are going to do i'm going to call cv2 im encode if i'm not mistaken then this will be jpg and then frame right and this is going to return two variables one of them we are not going to use it so it doesn't matter and the other one is a buffer 
ok now let's convert buffer to bytes and I'm going to do it like this let's call this something like image bytes and this will be buffer to bytes if I'm mistaken something like this I'm not sure about this character I'm just going to execute this file I'm going to do it for only one frame so we make sure everything's okay and let's see what happens okay and I got an error and it says something like could not find encoder for the specified extension in function em encode let's see if I have a if I have a character missing I think it's dot jpg let's see now now I have another error which is object has no attribute to bytes so I'm almost sure that this is without the underscore let's see now and now everything is okay okay so i'm just going to remove this break and now it's the most fun part of this tutorial because now it's the time to use amazon recognition to detect objects in this video so this is exactly how we are going to do i'm going to call the client we have just generated we have just created reco client and i'm going to call detect labels i'm going to input the image we have just uh, created this image byte and this will be something like image and i'm going to open a dictionary and this will be bytes and then image bytes and that's pretty much all and now i'm going to set the minimum confidence value in which we are going to uh, for which we are going to detect objects right we are going to set this value in 50 percent so and i think this is a capital m and this means that we are only going to detect objects if the confidence value is greater than 50 percent for everything else we are not going to get the object right we are going to filter all the detections with a confidence value lower than 50 percent that's exactly what it means and this will be something like response right and now let's do it like this okay and now i'm just going to iterate for for label in response labels right i'm going to iterate in all the results we got so this is how i'm going to do if label name equal to or target class right so if the object we have detected is a zebra then we are going to iterate uh, for instance number in range len label instances and if i'm not mistaken this is with a capital i right so we are going to iterate in all the zebras we have detected and now let's continue now let's get the bounding box we have detected with this uh, in this object in each one of these objects so this will be something like label instances instance number and then we need to call bounding box let's execute the code so far to make sure everything's okay and let's see let's just let's do it for only one frame so i'm going to break the loop here labels right because this is with a capital l most likely okay everything's just fine so i'm going to delete the break and i'm going to get back here and let's continue so now i'm going to ungrab all the information in the bounding box and this is something like x1 is equal to bounding box left and i'm going to cast it to int okay then y1 is equal to int bounding box top okay then the width of this bounding box is equal to bounding box um, 
width with a capital W if I'm not mistaken and then the height is equal to int bounding box height and let's see what happens if we just execute if, you, if we just print these values so uh, I'm going to print x1 y1 width and height and also I'm going to remove the int for now because I, uh, for now let's just remove it so I can show you something and then I'm going to add the int again but let's just for now to make sure everything is okay I'm just going to execute this as it is okay let's see what happens okay you can see that these are the values we are getting and this is why I removed the int this is why I'm not casting to int because otherwise everything will be a 0 or a 1 so these are the values we are getting and everything is in relative coordinates this is very very important so what we need to do now is to multiply these values for the uh, width and the height of the frame we are reading right so I'm going to define two new variables which are h and w and these are the uh, height and the width of every frame so this will be frame.shape and now let's just continue by doing something like this so x1 will be bounding box left uh, multiplied by the width of the image right then y1 will be exactly the same but for h by times h and then this is times w and this is times h okay and now i'm going to cast it to int okay and then let's print the values for x1 y1 width and height again and let's see what happens okay and now you can see that we are getting integers and everything seems to be okay right we are getting objects we are detecting objects so everything is okay so then the next step of this uh, pipeline is to write the detections but before we do so let's just make sure everything is 100% uh, proper everything is working just just fine and let's just visualize some of the frames with all the bounding boxes we are detecting on top and let's see what happens so i'm going to call cb2.rectangle i'm going to input the frame and then x1 y1 and then x1 plus width and y1 plus height and then i need to input the color if i'm not mistaken which is going to be green and then the uh, thickness of the rectangle which will be three for now so and now and then let's see what happens i'm going to visualize this frame by calling him show frame frame and cv2 weight key okay so we are plotting a bounding box on top of absolutely every single frame we are plotting a bounding box for each one of our objects and let's see what happens i'm just going to execute this file and let's see if we are detecting all of our zebras and everything seems to be working just fine right if i just press a letter you can see that we are just detecting all the frames this is not running on real time because obviously we are detecting many 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 zebras and we are plotting a rectangle a bounding box for each one of these zebras so this is not running on real time but you can see that nevertheless this is working just just fine so the only thing we need to do now is to take all these detections and we need to write these detections to our file system to our computer so this is how we are going to do I'm going to remove all the plotting because we are not going to do it anymore and now let's just write the detections and in order to do so I'm going to create a new variable a new uh, variable with the output directory with the location of the output directory which is where we are going to save all these detections so I'm going to define this variable like output dir and this will be my local computer and the directory will be called data so let's go back to the directory of this Python project and let's create a new directory which is called data I'm going to press enter and that is it 
Now, let's save all these detections into the YOLO format. So, I'm going to create another directory, which is... Uh, images, I'm going to create another variable for the images directory, which will be something like output dear images, and this is us path join output dear and images, right? I'm going to import OS. And then I'm going to create another variable for the annotations, for the detections. I'm going to call this other variable ANDS, output dear ANDS, and this will be something like this. And now I'm going back to my local computer, to my file system, and within this data directory I'm going to create two additional directories, one of them for the frames for the images, which I'm just going to call IMGS, exactly how I have called this variable over here, and then I'm going to create another folder which is called ANS, right? Exactly as I have called this other variable over here. So now everything is uh, set, everything is ready. We have just created the directories where we are going to save all the data. Now let's get back over here, and the only thing we need to do is I'm going to do something like with open, I'm going to do it here before we start this iteration, it's going to be much much better if we do it here for every single one of these frames we are going to open a text file and the path name will be something like with us path join output directory ants and then this will be the file name which I'm going to call frame dot txt and then I'm going to input the frame number format frame number which we haven't defined so I'm going to define it in a, in a second but let's just say string frame number cedar field 6 right now let me explain this in a few uh, in a couple of seconds but for now let's just get here I'm going to define a new variable which is frame number I'm going to initialize it as minus one and then I'm going to increment it for every single frame we read over here okay so we are initializing in minus one we are incrementing this variable here and then for absolutely every single image we are uh, creating this file name which is frame and then this integer this uh, this number but with six uh, zeros we are filling this number with six, six zeros so we make sure all the file names are all the same length that's very important or that's actually more for formatting reasons it's not 100% needed but it's going to make it look much much nicer uh, so now let's just continue and I'm going to open this as write and then as if and then that's pretty much all okay and now for each one of four detections the only thing we need to do is to write these detections and this is how we are going to do f dot write uh, we are going to write five numbers remember we are going to do it in the yellow format so we need five numbers and this will be something like the first one of these numbers will be a zero because we will be detecting only one object which is zebra so this will always be the number zero then it's the uh, the x and the y coordinates of the center of this bounding box so this is something like x1 plus width divided by 2 and then it's exactly the same but for the y coordinate plus height divided by 2 okay and then it's the width and then it's the height and i see there's an issue here okay a parenthesis missing let's see now okay and okay perfect and if we are using the YOLO format, remember we are just converting all these values into integers, but if we are going to save the annotations into the YOLO format, uh, we don't really need to do this conversion, right? So I'm just going to delete the integer and this multiplication. I'm going to do something like this because remember how the YOLO format works, we need the coordinates into the relative, we need relative coordinates. So we um, 
with the values like this will be just fine and that's pretty much all okay so we are writing all the detections and once we have reading all the detections the only thing we need to do is to close the file and that's pretty much all and let's save the images as well let's just prepare this data set as if it were a data set in the YOLO format so we can just take this data set and we could potentially train a model we could train an object detector with the data we are going to be saving and in order to do so we need to save the detections but we also need to save the images so I'm going to save the images over here we can just do it after we save all the detections we can call cb2 in write then the file location which will be pretty similar to the um, to the detections but we are going to change txt by jpg and that's pretty much all but we also need to change the directory which will be images okay and then we need to input the frame and that's all okay so let's see now if everything is okay let's just run it for only one image and let's see what happens everything is just fine and if i go to my local directory i open ants you can see i have a file with many many detections which makes sense because we had many many zebras and then if i go to the images directory you can see i have a frame the first frame from the video so everything seems to be just fine so the only thing we need to do now is to execute exactly the same process but for absolutely all the frames so i'm going to remove this break and then let's see what happens okay i see i got an error because we should be doing everything else only if we have read a frame right so this is a very small mistake and also while i was waiting for the execution to be completed i realized another mistake which is we should be dividing only the width and only the height by two these are the x and the y coordinates of the center of the bounding box everything should be okay now so in order to be 100% sure everything is okay i'm just going to execute this file again now the execution has been completed and we don't have any errors so everything is just fine and if i go to the images directory you can see i have 755 images because we are starting from zero so we have 755 images and these are the images of our zebras right these are all the frames from the video and then if i go to the annotations directory you can see i have all my annotations and i also have 755 uh, files right we have 754 and we are starting from zero so we have 755 so everything is working just fine so this is exactly how you can use Amazon Recognition as an object detector. This is exactly how you can detect objects using Amazon Recognition. And this is going to be all for this tutorial. My name is Felipe, I'm a computer vision engineer, and these are exactly the type of projects I make in this channel. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to click the like button, and I also invite you to subscribe to my channel. This is going to be all for today, and see you on my next video.